interesting. Greetings everyone, Ray Landis here, and today I have a really nice Fender Stratocaster that I want to talk with you about. All right, this is a Player Series Stratocaster made in Ensenada, Mexico, and uh, I, I think this is one of the nicest Stratocasters that I own. It's a special run. Um, I got it from Sweetwater, and this color is called Sapphire Blue, and if you can get a close look at that, you can see the wood grain through the polyester coat, and it's really got a nice look to it. So over the years, I've owned several Stratocasters made in the USA, and I want to say that this Mexican-made Stratocaster is in every way just as nice as the old American Standard Stratocasters that I owned. And I, I think that a lot of people are maybe uh, challenged with the idea that the standard is kind of made in Mexico now. You can get the higher level U.S. made Stratocasters. Uh, they come from California and they are uh, the kind of like the standard that people have in their minds. But the real standard Stratocaster, the one that was always like just the regular American standard, that one is really now made in Mexico. And Everything that you would expect in a, in a standard from that time period is available now in the player series. Uh, right, right now there's a, a new player series that has come out. It's called the Player 2, uh, which has a few upgrades. Uh, but I've taken this standard player series in the special run color and done, I've done a few modifications to it. And it is now what I would feel as a it's a primo instrument. Okay, a couple words about Fender. Uh, the Fender company in the United States has traditionally been in Corona, California, which is right near Los Angeles. Uh, they also have a major headquarters in Arizona. But if you think about the Corona plant, and then you think about the Mexico plant, which is in a city called Ensenada, it's really just across the border. And I don't think it's, it's not even 200 miles away. I think it's just a uh, a matter of like a hundred miles or less uh, from the U.S. plant, and they trade parts back and forth. They've opted to have the Player Series, the Player Two, the Player Plus. Uh, all of those are manufactured and put together in the Ensenada, Mexico plant. But they're so close to the California plant, they've done it for economical reasons to make the the standard that we're looking at a lot more affordable. Uh, because right now they can have them manufactured there at, at, a, at a lot less cost, you know, for manpower. So uh, the parts are traded back and forth. So it's really, it's negligible to say that they're that much inferior. In fact, as I mentioned with that earlier experience with two American standards that I owned uh, in years past, this guitar meets at, or exceeds what I had in those guitars. I'll tell you a little bit about the specs on this guitar. Um, I've done some upgrades to it, and I'll talk about those after I tell you what the standard specs are. But once again, this is a, a player series guitar, special run, uh, special color that I got from Sweetwater. And it also has a special run as far as the neck is concerned, because this neck is a roasted maple neck. Usually this guitar would be available in a regular maple neck, or it would be available with a, a po faro, which is kind of like an imitation rosewood neck. A lot of people don't like the po faro just because it's po faro, but there's nothing really wrong with it. The Player 2 series now has a, a standard, a regular rosewood proper uh, fretboard. But spec-wise, uh, it's got uh, a roasted maple neck, it's got medium jumbo frets, nine and a half inch radius. Uh, it's got a two point trim. It came with three player series Alnico pickups. I replaced one of them with a Seymour Duncan SSL five, which is a little, it's a little more powerful, a little more uh, articulate. And I've taken the, the components out and I've replaced the pots and the switch with a mojo tone solderless wiring kit which gives me uh, a blender knob so really what i have now instead of the standard three uh 
you know, three knobs with volume and two tone, I have a master volume, a master tone, and this is a blender. So now whatever position I'm in, if I'm in the neck position, I can blend in the bridge. If I'm in the, the bridge position, I can blend in the neck. And, you know, same thing with the inter, intermediate positions. So I've also taken the regular tremolo bar that these come with, and I don't, I've never really cared for the thread in tremolo that they used to come with, or they still come with, but I prefer this beefier, nice push in bar, and it's much more stable. And you can just use a little set screw there to kind of figure out what tension you want on it. But yeah, this guitar has all the great specs of a regular Stratocaster plus some little guys running away all right so when this guitar was shipped out it had standard stratocaster tuners and i replaced those with staggered locking tuners and i also replaced the string tree with one of the old american standard type string trees that uh, just has a little better appearance to it the one major problem i think i had with this guitar was that the nut was really carved kind of hokey. So I removed the nut and I replaced it with a bone nut. So once again about the neck we've got the, the modern C-shaped neck. This particular one did not come with rolled fingerboard edges but I've worked on it a little bit and they're semi-rolled now and I might just go ahead and work on that and make them a little bit more uh, rolled because that actually makes the whole thing feel a lot more comfortable. But the neck profile is nice and thin. It's really got a nice feel. The back of the neck is super smooth. Uh, it's got the skunk stripe. Uh, as you'll notice on the front, I replaced the pick guard. And this is an actual Fender branded pick guard uh, with the pearlized look. I did not change the back cover to match it. I just kept the original back plate on. And that back plate is the same color as what we used to have here on the front. I kept all the same knobs and everything. And uh, again, this bridge was replaced and it's got a really great action on the tremolo. It stays in really nice tune. This is a Primo Stratocaster. And I really feel that uh, a lot of people underestimate the player series. When you first get them, they, they need a little bit of TLC. Um, but if you're willing to do that, and if you're able to do that, you can really turn these player series Stratocasters into a super, super nice instrument. And this, I believe, is one of the nicest guitars in my collection. Um, I, I like it and I play it a lot. All right, so you can see that wood grain is just absolutely beautiful. And that is an exclusive limited run color. There's another shot of that grain. Isn't that beautiful? So I've got a little story about this guitar. Um, I actually, I like Stratocasters, they're my favorite. And I really like blue. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, that is just so beautiful. I think that I got all the things in this that I can imagine were kind of on my bucket list. One is the grain that shows through. Two, it's blue. And three, it's a Stratocaster with a maple neck. And that all those things together make it one of my favorites. But the thing I had a challenge with is that I try to name all of my guitars after some sort of a bird. And uh, this color is called a sapphire. So I went online, I looked up and I found out that there actually is a bird from South America and Central America that's called the sapphire. So that's what this is, it's called the sapphire. So if this video has inspired you to, uh, what's my motto again? Uh, what's my motto again? Uh, what's my motto again? Uh, build them, fix them, play them, or mod them, and you've been inspired to maybe do some of these types of things to your Stratocaster, then uh, I, I would ask that you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll try to bring you more content like this. Uh, just one last final word about this guitar that I think a lot of people would be interested in is that it's very, even though it's a full-size body, which some people are now trying to go to the lighter bodies, this is a, a fairly lightweight guitar. It's probably seven pounds, if that, maybe seven pounds, uh, you know, a couple ounces. Um, but it's very um, easy to handle. The body is made out of alder. And even though that's generally a slightly heavier wood, 
it's still this guitar is very easy to to handle and uh it's highly recommended i think that if you uh if you want a stratocaster you can't go wrong with the player series so if you've done something to your player series strat to make it a little more personal i'd love to hear about it in the comments and i'll go ahead and take whatever parts that i've used on this guitar and put links in the description so if you want to try to find them for yourself you'll be able to get to them especially this awesome tremolo bar